In this lesson, we'll take a look at some research as to why it is that these mindsets, a growth mindset or a fixed mindset, can have an impact on learning outcomes. In other words, how is it that, that one's belief about their intelligence, whether it's fixed or it can grow, how is it that one's belief about intelligence can actually influence one's success in learning in a school setting, for example? Now, in this lesson, then, we're going to assume that you're already familiar uh, with the difference between, say, a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. So for this lesson, we'll need uh, a quick introduction to the human brain. Here we have a human brain here, and it would be looking to the left, so the eyeballs would be here. And in this picture, we see that the surface of the brain has all these words, and uh, decades of research have allowed scientists to, to uh, identify different functions being carried out by different regions of the surface of the brain. The surface of the brain is called the cerebral cortex. And for example, in the back of the brain here, the visual cortex is processing visual information from the eyes. Uh, our sensation of touch is processed by this strip of tissue, uh, hearing by this region. And notice the speech up here in the front part of the brain. In fact, we'll identify four lobes. We've got the frontal lobe here. We have the temporal lobe. We have the parietal lobe here. And then the occipital lobe. Don't worry about those names, but just uh, let's focus on a couple of relevant uh, uh, functions here. Notice the word memory is sort of put down here in the temporal lobe. So the temporal cortex is going to be our long-term memory system, part of it. Uh, underneath the temporal cortex is uh, a critical hub in the emotional brain. A and then notice the front part of the brain. We have forethought, thought, judgment, feelings. This, these are all capacities relevant to making decisions. So when we're thinking about something, then activity in the frontal cortex can be detected. Now back to the, uh, the temporal lobe here. Underneath, if we were to cut away some of the surface of the temporal cortex, we would see two very important structures. The amygdala was that emotional uh, part of the brain. There are lots of parts of the brain that are involved in emotions, but the amygdala is a critical uh, component of the emotional brain. And then the hippocampus is a critical component of the memory system. Notice again its proximity to the cortex, the temporal cortex, which is the long-term storage site for some memories. So in this lesson then, we're going to try to sort of describe what's happening in the brain when we're attempting to learn something, and then we'll look at the research on the effects of different mindsets on learning outcomes. So this diagram can show us some of the basic ideas as to what's going on when we're trying to learn something. We're going to put a box up here in the frontal cortex, and this is going to represent what it is we're currently thinking about. Scientists sometimes call this our working memory system. So whatever you're thinking about, you could be reading something, you'd be listening to a lesson or a lecture or watching a film or whatever. Whatever you're thinking about, we're gonna, th that will be the contents of this short-term memory system. And we're suggesting that some frontal cortex uh, brain systems are involved in uh, giving this capacity for a short-term memory system. Now, the hippocampus, we said, down here in the temporal cortex was the gateway to long-term memory. So that the, underneath the temporal cortex is a critical structure. And if information is going to be stored in long-term memory systems, the information has to go through this hippocampal structure. And the hippocampus will then help the cortex store a long-term memory. So learning, therefore, requires a transfer of information from short-term memory systems to long-term memory systems, long-term memory systems. And notice the arrows here with the word attention. Attention systems control the flow of information into the memory systems. So as a general rule, uh, whatever you're paying attention to, to is what will have preferential access into the memory systems. So if you want to learn things, you have to pay attention to those things. So the attention systems are going to help information get from the short-term memory system into the long-term memory system through the hippocampus as an intermediary. People with a growth mindset then are effective in channeling their attention, in, in controlling their attention, and allowing their attention to focus on what needs to be learned. Again, because attention is critical to what will be learned and remembered, uh, people who can pay attention to information in the world have a better chance of storing that information in long-term memory. 
All right, it's time to look at the actual research. The title of the article is called Why Do Beliefs About Intelligence Influence Learning? And this is research by Carol Dweck and her colleagues. Uh, she was instrumental in alerting us to the significance of, of mindsets. So the situation is as follows. Imagine the subjects are in front of a computer screen and at the same time they are having their brain activity measured. Now, the subjects that the flow of time is going to go from right to left here. So the subject first is given some kind of question and then they have time to answer. And then they're going to be asked a confidence rating. How confident are they in their answer? Then they're going to get performance feedback. Were they correct or incorrect? And then notice there's a delay here and it's in this period of time that scientists are very interested in measuring brain activity. After this delay, they get learning relevant feedback. So if they got the incorrect answer, they're going to be able to get the correct answer here. In other words, learning could take place. Notice though, when they get the answer wrong, we might think of this in two different ways. If you get the answer wrong, we could, you could see it as a potential opportunity to get it right, or you might see it as a threat. Oh, I got the answer wrong. Uh, maybe that says something bad about me. So scientists were interested in whether people with different mindsets might have brains that are responding differently to the negative performance feedback. Perhaps uh, whether you have one mindset or another changes the way the brain responds and then makes it easier for the subject to learn information after getting some negative performance feedback. That was, the, that was what scientists were interested in. And in fact, what they found is that individuals that did have a growth mindset, as measured by surveys taken another time, individuals with a growth mindset were better able to learn corrected answers, right? So when they got something wrong, they actually were able to learn the corrected uh, answer and remember that when tested later. So they were given a surprise test at a later time. Individuals with a growth mindset had better memory for the correct answers on the items that they were initially incorrect on. And scientists suggest that when they look at the patterns of brain activity that what's going on here is that individuals with a growth mindset, they're, they're interested in learning. That's their goal. They have learning goals. And so when they get negative performance feedback, when they see that they got an answer wrong, what happens is that kind of because they're interested in learning, they see the wrong answer as an opportunity and the attention systems switch on to a higher degree and that allows better processing of the corrected answer. So uh, after you get the, the information that you got the answer wrong, a growth mindset brain kind of wants the right answer. So in a sense, back to our, our picture here, remember, for effective learning, you have to transfer information from the short-term system into the long-term memory system through the hippocampus, and attention systems are critical. So for a growth mindset person whose attention system responds effectively to incorrect, uh, an incorrect response, they crank up their attention, and now they can effectively process the correct answer and get it into the long-term memory system. So in a way, we could say that folks with a growth mindset, they, they have uh, an attention to learning, that they're very uh, sort of prepared to attend to uh, learning situations. So a brain with learning goals, which is characteristic of growth mindset, responds to negative feedback with increased attention, which allows effective transfer of information from short-term to long-term memory systems. Notice, this is, this is possible because individuals are not very anxious when they're getting that negative feedback. As we'll see, uh, if you have a fixed mindset, anxiety will become a factor in information processing. But for a growth mindset, there's low anxiety here because the focus is on learning. And if you get an answer wrong, well, that's an opportunity to learn the right answer. Okay, well, what about the folks with the fixed mindset? Well, let's look at the learning outcome first. What they found was individuals with a fixed mindset had worse memory for the actually correct answers. So on those trials, when they were incorrect, the fixed mindset individuals did not remember the correct answer as well as the individuals with a growth mindset. So evidently, uh, the correct answer did not get stored as well in the long-term memory system. Now, why would that be? Well, 
Again, what's characteristic of a fixed mindset is not learning goals, but performance goals. Here, individuals are not so much focused on learning, but rather how they look, their performance. Are they doing well for themselves and for others? And therefore, a negative feedback like this cranks up the threat systems in the brain. Now, these are emotional systems. And the idea here is that the, the perceived threat now hijacks the attention system. So now the attention system is, is thinking about the self. And so you might have self-critical rumination. You, know, you start thinking bad thoughts about yourself. Oh, my goodness, I got it wrong, and I must be dumb or something, or what will people think, that kind of thing. So notice then, if you perceive uh, this negative feedback as a threat, that's going to take some of those attentional resources away from potentially learning the right answer. So we, ha we would have reduced attention to the correct answer, and reduced attention means it will not be stored well in the long-term memory system. And if we just connect back to our picture of the brain, recall that structure underneath the temporal cortex called the amygdala, and that was part of the emotional hub of the brain. It's this structure then that would show increased activity when there's a perceived threat. And so the idea is this uh, amygdala activity is going to be influencing then what it is you're going to be thinking about. So for fixed mindset individuals, the perceived threat is correlated to activity in this structure. And then your thoughts will not be about learning, but will be about your self-image. And as such, the information that you could be learning won't get down through the uh, memory system to be stored in long-term memory because your emotions are cranked up, you have high anxiety, and that's influencing what you're thinking about. And if you're not thinking about learning, you're not going to be learning. So we could say that the fixed mindset individuals have a high anxiety, and that high, that high anxiety is a... Is a, a, a an impediment it will interfere with learning because the attention systems will be redirected to the self sort of to repair the self in our picture here we're kind of putting an X here so if you have performance goals and you get negative feedback now the attention systems can no longer effectively transfer the correct answer into long-term memory because the attention systems are worried about the self and your self-image so a brain with performance goals responds to negative feedback with high anxiety, which blocks effective transfer of information from short-term to long-term memory systems. People with fixed mindsets focus on what the feedback means to the self or how others will interpret that feedback. Learning is not the goal. The goal is to look good to others and feel good about oneself. Now, it does raise a question, can individuals with fixed mindsets, can they be sort of persuaded, can they shift their view of their own intelligence more towards the growth mindset end of the spectrum? And if so, th there would be the gains by doing so, right? So in other words, that learning outcomes would improve if individuals could shift, could switch their mindset. Well, researchers are, are trying to figure out how we can get students to shift their mindset. And so a lot of research is being done in this area. But for our purposes, it's important now just to be aware of these different mindsets and to identify when you might be having a fixed mindset moment or a growth mindset moment. And then if you are having a fixed mindset moment, whether uh, upon reflection, we can start to, to think about uh, uh, shifting that, that mindset. Uh, and so we'll, throughout the year, we'll be talking about uh, sort of uh, indications of fixed mindset and different ways to think about one's intelligence to make the shift over into to the growth mindset category. Because the evidence suggests that individuals with a growth mindset have better learning outcomes. And now this research gives us a little bit of, a, of, a, of an intuition as to why that would be. Fixed mindset individuals are perceiving threats and threats, the, the negative uh, anxiety and emotion associated with that is not good for learning. Growth mindset individuals are focused on learning, so they see negative feedback as an opportunity, which leads to more effective learning in the future.